What's going on everyone? It's Ben from YGO from Zero back with another retro Yu-Gi-Oh video back with another Reaper format video and in this video we're going to be going over one of the coolest decks that you can play in the format based around elemental heroes or one specific elemental hero that is elemental hero Wildheart. Now there are a couple different ways that you can play heroes in this format. You can go with a more typical fusion sort of strategy but the payoffs for that aren't like too good. I mean, there are some, right? You've got Elemental Hero Shining Flare Wingman, which is a big body that buffs up, up and deals damage to your opponent. Uh, you've got like Elemental Hero Wild Edge, which is kind of cool because it attacked all your opponent's monsters. So there are things that you can like do with the Elemental Heroes. You can do a stall deck based around Rampart Blaster as well. So there are a variety of different things that you can do in that respect. However, one of the most unique ways to play heroes in this format is through something called Wildheart Control. Now, Wildheart is an elemental hero. You can make a few monster out of it. But the key thing for this deck is that it's unaffected by trap effects. So, if you're playing at things like Gravity Bind or something, this thing can keep hitting in under it. And if you're protecting this thing from your opponent's monsters, your opponent might not really have a good way to deal with this thing. As things like Sacred to Armor, Widespread Ruin, etc. don't really affect this guy. So, you can play a bit of a control strategy as protecting this guy. Potentially using TT to, you know, wipe away your opponent's board while keeping this guy around is also really cool. And there's a lot of different interesting things you can do with this sort of warrior strategy. So I figured, you know, I've showed off fusion heroes in the last format and I'll be showing off fusion heroes in future formats as well. For my hero episode for Reaper format, why not just focus on this deck and show off a bit of a unique direction to take this archetype. Or maybe not archetype, but at least this one monster from the archetype. Now, the list you see in front of you here was actually piloted by the Duelist Alto Clef to a topping finish uh, in a previous Reaper format tournament. So, you know, this does have some tournament success behind it as well. And I think it's a very, very good deck list. Let's go through the card by card real quick. We got a Break of the Magic Warrior to wipe away our opponent's back row. We got Triple DD Assailant to clear away their monsters and also just be a big body sometimes. We got a DD War Lady to do much the same as DD Assailant. We got Triple Elemental Hero Wild Heart, which is really the heart and soul of the deck. You're trying to protect the thing as much as possible, so you can just keep getting in with 1500 damage. You had an Exiled Force to pop your opponent's stuff. We got Mataza the Zapper times two. Uh, this is a level three 1300 attack warrior monster that says it can make a second attack each battle phase. So if you're able to protect this, kind of like with, you know, Wildheart here, you are able to get in for 2600 a turn, which is a really, really good clock. Also does beat in under Gravity Bind, so that's very nice as well. We got a Mystic Swords from level 2 to deal with our opponent's sets. We've got a Sangen here to search out a variety of monsters from our deck. We got Double Sasuke Sandbar at number 4. This card is so annoying for your opponent to deal with because, you know, if you call the coin flip right, you just have a, basically a body on field that keeps removing your opponent's stuff, and it's just super annoying for them to out. We got Triple Spirit Reaper as well to, you know, wall up a bit and also get hand rips in there. It also attacks under Gravity Bind as well. For the spells, we got a Dark Hole to wipe away the entire board and then enemy controller to either switch the battle position on our opponent's stuff or to take control of it. We've got a Heavy Storm here to wipe away our opponent's back row. We've got an MST to wipe away their back row as well. we got an Offerings of Doom. This is a bit of a weird card here. I think it's a neat tech. It's not a trap, so this means that if your opponent goes for like a Brain Con or a Snatch Deal on your Wild Heart, you can use it on that if you really do need to. So that's kind of neat. Uh, and it's just quick play removal. So that's kind of nice. I'm not really sure how I feel about it in the deck. I'm not really sure if it's that necessary, but it is kind of interesting to have here at least. We've got a Pot of Avarice to recycle our resources after we've gone through them. We've got Double Reinforcement the Army to search out all the warriors in our deck. we got Triple Smash and Grab to clear the way for our Wild Hearts and things to attack in. we got Snatch Kill to take our opponent's stuff. For the traps, we got a Call the Haunted to bring back our monsters. Now, an interesting note about Call the Haunted and Wild Heart is if you bring back the Wild Heart with the Call the Haunted and Call the Haunted is destroyed, then Wild Heart will actually not be destroyed because it's unaffected by the trap effect to destroy it there. So that's kind of neat. we got Double Gravity Bind because Wild Heart can hit under it. We've got Triple Sacred Zoo Armor to deal with our opponent's attacking monsters. Triple Solemn Judgment to stop their plays. And also a torrential tribute as i mentioned this can pair really really well with wild heart for the side deck we've got sort of a hodgepodge here we got triple massacre restrict to deal with monarchs uh we've got double dust for now to deal with more back row heavy decks we got double threatening roar for more otk style decks we get double true nade as well to deal with the dust tornadoes but it can also reset our own floodgates so that's kind of nice there as well we get a knock to deal with more flip focus strategies we got a book to set down our opponent's monsters for more aggressive strategies this can be pretty good and we've got another miss sword from level two for bringing in the book or if our opponent's on a more flip focus strategy we got a stealth bird if our opponent's on a slower strategy this can just be good to like wall up with and you know deal thousand damage every turn against them so that's kind of nice and we get double kaiku for more chaos oriented decks for the fusion deck you know this is a pretty standard uh fusion deck for a stein deck you know so definitely check out my other videos in reaper format if you want to sort of see the 
in-depth card by card for this, but like realistically, it doesn't really matter much in this deck since we don't have an access to Stein or Metamorphosis. So uh, really it will only come up if we manage to take control of our opponent's Stein with something like Snatch Steel or potentially like, I, I mean, Snatch Steel is really the only thing that we can do in this deck. I mean, enemy controller as well, I guess, but it really won't come up that often, but it is good to know about this sort of like utility fusion deck here. And you can check out one of my other Reperformer videos for that. But that's going to do it for the deck breakdown. Let's dive into some games and see if Wildheart can get us some Ws. Okay, we got our first game against Atomic Purple. And I believe this is their first time on the channel. So welcome to the channel. Pleasure to have you on. And we're going to dive into the games. Now, if you like this sort of Reaper format gameplay video, then definitely subscribe to the channel. We got more coming. And we'll also have more just for other retro formats as well. Because we're actually nearing like the end of my Reaper coverage. We should probably be wrapped up either by the end of this week or next week. So, you know, I'll, I'll be moving on to Chaos Return and some other formats as well. But I will be having, like, older locals and stuff for, you know, Reaper format eventually. So, definitely look forward to that. But anyway, I've been sort of glossing over the gameplay here just because it's been pretty boring. I've just summoned out a Sasuke Sarah at number 4, backed up with a Saku. I realistically won't use the Saku if they attack into the Sasuke Sarah at number 4. unless something like Don's Luke where I really can't afford to lose the flip there. But I figured that this should be threatening enough, and it seems like it was, because they're just going to T-set and pass. We're going to bring out this Mystic Sword in level 2 to try and just hidden that set, and it will go through. And we'll hidden directly to the Sasuke Samurai number 4. And, you know, they set the DD and Sailor instead of attacking in. That just shows how scary this thing is, you know? Even though it's a 50-50 chance, like, if your opponent does lose that, then you're in a much better position than your opponent is. Because you get to attack in, you retain the tempo, retain the board advantage as well, and you can go for a big swing. So, so let's get to round number four, deceptively strong card. And now that we do have, uh, you know, this board set up, we just go for a Solemn Judgment, Gravity Bind, Saku. If they've got heavy, we might use the Solemn on that, honestly. But I want to get the Gravity Bind set up just in case, you know, they bring out two monsters and Saku is not enough, so... They are indeed going to bring out a Sidra, so this is sort of like why I did this. Then go for a Rota as well, grabbing an Elemental Hero Wild Heart. Okay, well, let's look we got the Mirror here, or a variant of the Mirror. They're going to go for Lightning Vortex, pitching that Wild Heart, wiping away our entire board. And that's perfectly fine by us. We can go for a Saku here. They're going to summon out a Lily in main two, just to sort of like be like, okay, you know, try dealing with this. And luckily, we do have the way to do that. We've got the smashing here. So we're going to bring that out, and then we're going to bring out this Wild Heart. We ordered it this way in case they've got a Solemn Judgment back there. Because, you know, we want to know if the Smashing actually goes through or not before committing the Wild Heart to field. But, it looks like it will, and we'll be able to attack in for 15. They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw a Rota here. So, we're just going to bring out this other Wild Heart. We're not playing, like, Don's Luke or anything. So, you know, no need to bring out that. So, we're just going to deal 3,000. They can't stop this with traps. They're going to set one pass back to us. We've got the Rota to search out the Exiled Force, and that should be enough to finish off the game here. Unless they've got a way to stop this. And it looks like they do not, so that'll just be the end of the game. So for the siding process, because they are on Wild Hearts, I side out of the Gravity Binds. Um, because, you know, Gravity Binds really bad against a Wild Heart deck, right? Like, that seems pretty rough. So I bring in a Book of Moon, I believe, and I bring in also, I think, uh, Kaiku. I, I could be wrong about that, though. Uh, we'll have to see in the games. But, yeah, just siding out the Gravity Binds is the key thing there. Um... That's a really good hand. Oh, I bring in a Dust Tornado. I think that's what it is. Because they might be on the Binds in Game 2. Uh, so we want to stop them from going for that sort of thing. So it looks like they, they misclicked there. Unfortunately, that does happen on Dueling Book sometimes. They're going to go for Compi here and rip away the Snatch from us. So we're left with this Dust Tornado and Saku. And they're going to set one pass back to us. So we draw a Rota here. We could go for, like, Rota for Warrior Lady or Exiled Force here and just, you know, deal with that set. But we're just going to play it safe. We're going to set this Reaper set of Saku pass back to them. Because we don't want them to know what we drew there. And so we want to bluff like, oh, maybe the set is not a Saku, right? Uh, They're going to summon out a Wild Heart here. So unfortunately, Saku won't do anything against that. I could have potentially set it out the Sakus, but I feel like we've got enough in our deck to not really, uh, you know, need to side out the Sakus, right? Like they're playing other things besides Wild Heart that Saku does hit. So it's pretty good there. But I feel like the binds are just not really that useful here in this matchup. But we set the Wild Heart because that walls up against what they've got here. If they bring in a bigger monster to attack into this, we've got the Saku for that. But if not, they can't get over this. And it looks like they can't get over that. So we get to see what their set is too. So now we can sort of plan accordingly to that. And we're going to go for a Rota here for a DD Assailant. We could have also gone for DD Warrior Lady. But I don't want to do that right now because I want to get my Pot of Avarice set up. And unfortunately, I don't have the way to do that yet. But I figured doing this is a good start. So we're going to attack into the Wild Heart, attack into the Sangin. They're going to start to King of the Swamp. Okay, it seems like not a pure mirror. Seems like they're playing a bit of an interesting strategy here. 
So maybe going into Wild Edge or something like that. They bring a DD Salem attack into RDD Salem. I could have potentially Saku this. In hindsight, maybe I should have. Because then also, you know, that makes it more likely my Salem will hit the grave as opposed to being banished. But I figure I can save the Saku for a bigger threat here for when they're potentially attacking the Wild Heart or something like that. And I can just be fine hitting in with the Wild Heart next turn. But I think, honestly, I probably should have saku there just to get in 3200 next turn and put them on a really strict clock. But uh, they go for Death Shoot here, so they are able to take away that Warrior Lady. And they do now know that our set is the Saku, given that, you know, they knew that earlier. Uh, so that's kind of rough for us. We attack in for 15, and then we're just going to pass back to them. They're going to go for an MST on our Saku. Yeah, that's rough. They're going to go for a Gigantes here. Okay, pretty interesting stuff there. They're going to attack over our Wild Heart. We lose four. They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw Exiled Force here. And we could potentially Exiled Force the set. What we're going to do instead is we're just going to Exiled Force the Gigantes because that's a bit of a threat on board, just hitting in every turn to our life points. And then, you know, it's awkward because they know that these are probably Death Tornado and Solemn. I mean, we could have set... Avers is a bluff, but like realistically, they know what these two cards are. They don't know which is which, but they know what they are. But I do think that like we do need some form of protection here because we are in a bit of a vulnerable spot. Maybe I should have waited a turn though before committing that though. So that way they just really didn't know. But um, yeah, as is, they're going to go for King of the Swamp here, add a polymerization. So that makes me a little bit scared because it seems like they're going for big plays here. But it looks like they're just going to bring in a Wild Heart and a Warrior Lady and attack in for 3k. We will take that. We're fine with that. We've got Dark Hole for next turn to potentially do something here. We are going to do that. We're going to Dark Hole the board away, bring out a Sasuke Samurai number four, tack in for 12, and then just pass back to them. I feel like this is a decent spot to be in. They go for a Gigantes here, which is pretty rough. We could potentially Solemn this if we wanted to. I don't necessarily know that we want to, though, um, because, you know, this is their special summon, not their normal summon. So they might have another normal summon to follow it up with. And if we're pretty low, then that could be pretty bad for us. So we just got to hope that the Sasuke Samurai does call the right coin toss. It looks like it will indeed. So we feel really good about that. If it didn't, you know, that gets us a fourth monster for Avarice. So I feel like we're pretty good setting up that. But, uh, yeah, we got Smashing anyways. So we would have been able to use Smashing on the Gigantes there. We just would have taken 700 more. But either way, I think we would have been fine here. They go for a breaker, and we are fine with that. They go for the Dust Tornado there, so we're going to chain that, hit their Dust Shoot, so I feel good about hitting that. Then choose not to attack in the Sasuke Samurai number four. And we've got the Smashing here, so it won't matter either way. But yeah, it's going to be the end of the game there. So a bit unfortunate for our opponent that, um, you know, we got the coin toss right. But I do think this shows how strong this deck can be. And, you know, even if they had gotten the coin toss right, you know, we had Smash with the Gigantes. And they would have been able to bring up Breaker and gone for one of our back row. But then we would have eventually drawn the Reaper and set that to wall up a bit. So, uh, yeah, they just had a Polly and a King of the Swamp there, which wouldn't have really helped against a defense position Reaper. So I think we would have ultimately been fine here. But it is a bit questionable sometimes, you know, when you come down to a coin flip here. But either way, uh, this wasn't the only game that I got with a Tom Purple. Uh, they wanted to sort of tweak some things with their deck after this game. So, you know, after that, we dove into another one. So let's dive into that now. Okay, we got our second game here against Atomic Purple. And we're both on, like, well, I'm on the exact same deck, but they're on a deck that, you know, is very similar, but with some minor tweaks. So we'll have to see exactly how that manifests there. Our hand is not really the best, but it's something, I guess. I mean, we're just going to set a Saku pass back to them. Uh, we can Saku the rats, so that's something. But we don't really have the most aggressive hand right now. They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw a Solemn Judgment here. So we're drawing a bunch of Solemns, which is kind of nice for later. Uh, but we're just going to set the Saku pass back to them. We draw a Snatch Seal, which unfortunately is not really the best for us here. And they're going to go for a Heavy Storm on our Saku. They're going to go for a huge play here. Bring out double uh, Wild Heart, a DD Whirly, and a Gigantes here. And now they're going to attack in for a lot of damage. And this is going to be pretty rough for us. We're down to 1,600. This is a very, very scary spot to be in against an aggressive deck here. And they're going to pass back to us. Now we draw Wild Heart. We do have some ways to out the board. Uh, smashing Ground and Offering just kills two monsters outright. And if we Snatch Seal a monster that they've got, then we can use it to crash into another one. So there are a couple ways to deal with this board. And I have to really think about, like, which ways I actually want to do. I think what I want to do here, ultimately, is I want to go for Snatch on the um, the Gigantes, Smashing Ground one of the Wild Hearts, and then I'll Snatch uh, Gigantes attack into the Warrior Lady. And if they want to banish this, then I'm okay with that because they're not getting a 1,000 every turn. But if they don't want to banish this, then I keep the Gigantes around. I think you could argue that if I want to keep the Gigantes around, I should Smashing the Warrior Lady, which I think is also fine. Honestly, 
that probably would have been the better play in hindsight, give them less choices here. Because if they've got like a return from the different dimension or something, or a way to capitalize off this Gigantes being banished, then that's very good for them to get those banished. So yeah, I think in hindsight, I should have smashing the Warrior Lady as opposed to the Wild Heart. But either way, it didn't really matter here because they chose not to banish. But just giving them the choice was a mistake on my part. So uh, because they chose not to banish, I just choose to crash the Wild Heart into this Wild Heart, leave the offerings as defense in case they manage to pierce through this board somehow. And unfortunately, we're just accepting that the Heavy will basically be dead here because we need our Solemns online. We're in too precarious a spot to really play around that. So we draw another Smashing, which isn't really the best here. We're just drawing no monsters at all over the course of this game. We attack him with 19 for the Gigantes. They will gain 1,000, though, every turn. So, um... I believe they should have gained a thousand here. Hopefully that doesn't matter in the end, but um Yeah. Or no, they gained a thousand during their standby. Okay, never mind. Uh it all worked out. We are all good here. So they're gonna set one. We summon out this wild heart here. We tag him with Gigantes first, just in case it's like um, you know, DD Warrior. Or not DD Warrior, but DD Assailant. So we want to actually get over that. And unfortunately for us, it's Sangan, so that's a bit scary. We're gonna attack in for fifteen hundred with that wild heart, pass back to them. They gain another thousand here. Go for Dark Hole. We're just going to solemn that. We could potentially have let that go through. Just let our, both of our monsters go to grave. And then if they try to summon something, we've got solemn. But I don't think that I can afford to do that. I think we need to keep the aggressive pressure while we've got it. They're going to go for a King of the Swamp here. Add a Polymerization with some really cool art. Uh, and they're going to go for Miracle Fusion. Banishing a uh, King of the Swamp and a Wild Heart for a, an Elemental Hero Wild Edge. So it seems like they're playing the Fusion package here. So very cool stuff there. They're going to attack in to our Wild Heart, and we got an offering for the Doom that. We can't let that go through. And also, I want to note that I didn't Solemn that, because we do have the offerings. And if we Solemn that, then the material would still be in Grave. So if they drew into the Miracle Fusion later, they could have pulled that off. So I did want to use up that Miracle Fusion there. So we don't draw because of the offerings there. Um, but now we can attack in for 1,500 plus 1,900. They're going to go for a call and bring back a Warrior Lady here. So this time we will attack into the DE Warrior Lady with the Gigantes. And because of the way that replay rules work in a Reaper format, we are actually able to redeclare with the Wild Heart. It works the same way it doesn't go there. So I think this is the last format where it actually works that way, um, being Reaper that is. But I'm not quite sure. They bring an assailant here. We could have potentially solved that. But since we're not taking lethal damage, I choose not to. They go for return here. And I'm very glad I didn't use the psalm on the uh, assailant. Because that would have been pretty bad for us. But uh, so we go for psalm on that return. And they have to pay half for cost as well. They're down to 1700. We've got smashing to deal with the assailant. And we'll just set a heavy and a call. If they've got heavy, we lose either way. So we may as well uh, double set here to bluff. They're going to go for a pre-mat here, and they're going to bring back the uh, Wild Heart there, which makes a lot of sense. They're going to attack in for 15. We've got a call of our own, and we'll bring back our own Wild Heart. So, yes, they can crash, but we don't really have anything else to bring back here. And I want the Wild Heart in case they draw into Spawn Trap Moveable later, or in case we have to Heavy Storm the board here. Like, if they don't actually attack into our Wild Heart, then we can actually Heavy the board and wipe away their Wild Heart, because pre-mat will destroy it, because it's a spell. Um, but keep our own. So that's kind of a neat combo. And so I feel like Wild Heart's just the better pick to go there. Unfortunately, they do indeed crash. They set two pass back to us. We're just going to heavy that because this is the highest value heavy we could get at this point. We set a solemn pass back to them. They're going to bring out a DD assailant. We solemn that. They, oh, we draw Reaper. We set the Reaper because, you know, there are so many draws off the top that kill us if they if we summon the Reaper in attack. They've got Gigantes. That would have been one of the draws that killed us there. So they attack into the Reaper. Uh, we luckily protect ourselves. We draw Dark Hole. We're just going to set that as a bluff. I could potentially have kept it in hand. Uh, you know, they've used up a Heavy, though. So I don't really feel like we need to. But, I mean, if they've got, like, Breaker or MST, that would be rough for the Dark Hole there. But then they can't get through our Reaper anyways, so it's not the worst thing in the world there. Um, but you could argue that I should have left it in hand either way. They set one pass back to us. We draw a Sangan here. We're just going to go for a Dark Hole. Wipe away the entire board. Summing out that Sangan and tacking in for lethal damage. So, very, very intense games. Those were super, super intense. Very, very cool stuff. Um, but that shows how much of a grind this deck can have, even if it gets into a pretty bad spot early on. But we're going to go into game two. This time we're going second here. And we draw a pretty good opener, all things considered. They're going to set one summon out AD War Lady here. They're going to go for Dust Shoot, unfortunately, because we could have gone for smashing on their War Lady Reaper attack in to rip a card out of their hand. But now we won't quite be able to do that. We can still go for smashing and Mataza if we want to. And that is indeed what we're going to do. So we get in for 2600 here, dropping down to 5400. Set a Saku pass back to them. They know about the Saku, though. 
So, you know, it's kind of unfortunate they can bring in this wild hard attack into Mataza, but it's kind of like what we had to do here. We could have set MST instead of the bluff, but I don't really think it benefits us that much. We're just going to bring out this Sasuke Samurai number four. They are going to bring out this exiled, you know, pop that attack in for 15, kind of rough, but it is what it is. Uh, we draw Heavy Storm here. Not the best. We're just going to pass back to them. I could have potentially Snatch Shield the Wild Heart. I could have done this two turns ago to actually attack him with Wild Heart and the Sasuke Samurai number four, but I didn't really feel like that was necessary, um, especially because they know about the Saku and also like, you know, they could have like a Heavy Storm or something to stop this as well. So they've got MST though, and they've got Poly plus Miracle Fusion. So they're going to Polymerization into one Wild Edge, then Miracle Fusion into the other. And then they've got a Rat. And that will indeed be the end of the game because this is 5,600 plus 1,400. So 6,600 total to our 6,300. So maybe if I played this differently, things would have turned out a little bit differently. They only had one MST there. And, you know, if we had Snatch and Saku up, then we would have been in a pretty good spot. And I don't think they could have actually killed us here. But, you know... That is what it is, you know, it's, and we played around certain things, we didn't play around others, and I feel like, you know, this was an outside enough case that we didn't really need to have to play around it too much, and it was better to play around heavy, but, you know, uh, hindsight's twenty twenty, and also, I, I mean, I don't know, I, I think it's debatable. Let me know down in the comments below what you would have done there, and whether you think that was the right choice or not, but still very cool to see this deck actually pop off, you know. We got to see a poly plus a miracle fusion, and that is just a broken combo, uh, if you can actually pull it off. Getting double wild edges, very easy to OTK here, as you saw here, so, um, very cool stuff. So we're going to dive into game three, hopefully things turn a bit better for us. Uh, I don't know, we're siding the same way we did in uh, game one, I believe. I think we might have brought in a T-Roar instead of Gravity Binds, maybe, uh, to deal with, like, uh, Return from the Different Dimension. But either way, it it's, like, pretty similar. But anyway, they're going to attack him with a rat. We go for a Saku here. Pop the rat. They're going to banish the rat. Bring out a Gigantes here. Pass back to us. Just keep that board presence up. We're going to bring out Mataza and go for a Smashing just to get in for 2600 here. Because I feel like that's worth doing at this point. We're going to send an Econ pass back to them. We're going to bring out Assailant. Attack into the Mataza. We're just going to switch it to the Defense. So that way we can potentially uh, get in for 2600 next turn. Those double back row kind of hurt us a little bit, but I think we still go for a play here. We're going to go for Exiled Force because if we go for Warrior Lady, then one, it sets up their banish pile for return play, but two, uh, it could get stopped by like Sakuratsu Armor or something. So we're just going to go for an Exiled Force here attack and with Mataza. And that will indeed go through. So they're down to 2800. I feel pretty good about this. We set the Dust Tornado. This won't protect Mataza, but it could potentially bluff that it would. Uh, but they're going to just attack into the Mataza anyways. This is the correct thing to do, in my opinion. Uh, they're going to set one pass back to us. We draw an MST there, so that's pretty good. We can wipe away their entire back row if we so choose. We're just going to attack into the rat, set the MST pass back to them. They're going to go for a Wild Heart of their own, attack into the level 2 with the Wild Heart. Deal 600 to us, attack in with the Gigantes. And they're getting pretty big damage in here, so we managed to get big damage into them, but, uh, yeah, it might be kind of rough with them getting big damage into us. Luckily, we do have a play here to wipe away their entire board. We can attack him with the Wild Heart. Then we can smashing the Gigantes in main two here. Pass back to them. And I feel like it was worth doing this, even though it does leave us wide open, because we do have ways to deal with their back row here. And if we draw any monster, we're in a pretty good spot. We draw Avarice, and we actually do have four monsters in Grave. So we don't have Avarice online yet, but that would be pretty good if we draw, like, any other monster, we can go for Avarice here, most likely. So, we draw a Rota, which is basically a monster here. We're going to go for the Rota, grab a Wild Heart here, and we're just going to attack in for 1,500. So, not really much they can do against this. So, I'll hit in, drop them down to 1,300. They're going to go for a Snatch Shield. We've got Dust for that. And they're going to go for Dark Hole, wipe away our Wild Heart. We've got this Reaper here, which is pretty good. We could just somehow Reaper hit in, but instead we're just going to go for Avarice and try and line up a game shot. If we get a way to get into a Wild Heart here then we just win the game, basically, unless they've got, like, Book of Moon or Econ or something like that. And we do indeed draw this Wild Heart, so we're just going to go for that, attack in for 15, and that will be the end of the game. So it looks like they just had a Miracle Fusion and Knock, so both of those were dead. So, you know, either way, we were able to get in with this Wild Heart, and I think Wild Heart really showed the strength, just being able to build a deck around it, right? Like, it's really cool to see... Uh, you know, one of the elemental heroes branching out into their own strategy. So I hope that you all enjoyed this video as always. Let me know what you thought about the deck and the video down in the comments below. Subscribe if you like this sort of content. I got more coming on the way and I'd really like to reach 1500 subscribers by the end of the month. And we're only about 50 away. So with your help, we can do that. If you want to support me directly, you can also uh, head on over to the Patreon, linked in the description down below. And if you do join the Patreon, get a shout out on these videos. So big shout outs to Bren Donker, Rincewind, GMYFS, Portrap Coon, uh, Tyler Compton, and Dump Truck. It really means a lot that you all support me this way and encourage me to make more videos like this one. 
But that's going to do it for this video. If you like what you saw here and want to get games in this format or any other format that are featured on the channel, head over to the YGR from Zero Discord server in the link down below. But until next time, I've been Ben from YGR from Zero, and I'm signing off.